the fine structure constant is a free parameter in quantum theory um, that is thrown in. It's usually given as one over 137. Um, okay, so um, that value is added to uh, quantum theory at the very specific, very important place where it outputs the correct answer for the electron uh, spectroscopy. So for the way the electron behave and its energy level. And so, it, but it is a free parameter, like no physicist uh, can tell you why it's one over 137. Now, that's an approximation of the fine structure constant, you know, just to be precise. Um, it's yeah. actually um, the, uh, uh, you, you can think of it as the elemental charge um, over um, the electron charge. But um, so it really, um, it, it, it's a little more complex than, than that simple um, uh, uh, fraction. But it really um, is a mystery in, in physics. Um, and like, it, it, just, it just works. It's just when you throw it in there, it works. And, um, and so it was thrown in there. Uh, and, uh, and it's just recently, since we produced this paper, uh, uh, just the, the electron solution where we solve for the electron mass, uh, for all the electrons, um, uh, meaning for all the atoms in the table of elements using our holographic solution, using the Planck field. And it, it's exact. It's very, very, very powerful. It's, it's actually awesome. one order of magnitude more precise than the standard model. And it, out, and it outputs all of the table of elements and it doesn't use any free parameter, okay? Uh, where in the standard model, there's plenty, mm. especially for the, for the mass of the electron. And it explains very fundamental reason why the electron is the electron mm. and why the fine structure constant is the fine structure constant. And that is that at, um, at the Bohr atom radius, so, so imagine the first solution is the, is the proton, which is the nuclei of the atom. So, so you have all these little Planck spherical units that are oscillating. So when I'm saying oscillating, don't visualize something going up and down on an oscilloscope. The universe is not an oscilloscope. Imagine mm -hmm. something spinning. So you have these little plunks spinning. And the spin relationship, the spin network, is all the, the little plunks spinning together. There's billions of them in one proton, right? There's 10 to the 60th plunk in one proton, inside the volume of one proton. This 10 to the 40th on the surface. Imagine that whole ball spinning, all these plunks spinning, then those are trillions of plunks spinning together, makes up the proton. And, it's, and, and from our equation, it shows that it spins at C. And from this equation, we were able to predict the radius of the proton more precisely than any other um, uh, theory on the planet. That, that was one of the major um predictions i was able to make but as well and that's verified in laboratory now in accelerators but but as well you can imagine if you go away from that proton you can imagine that the plant field is slowing down right as you go further and further and further so you at c at the equate at the at the event horizon of the proton and as you get towards the size of a hydrogen atom and then you, and when you arrive literally at the size of a hydrogen atom as, as the Bohr atom radius, um, you're going exactly 137 slower than C. <laughs> so you get alpha. It's, um, so, so um, it's C alpha. And so that um, defined 
And, and so that's plugged into our equation of the ratio of Planck's in the whole Bohr atom now, not just in the proton, but in the whole Bohr atom, the number of Planck's inside, the number of Planck's on the surface and the ratio, and then you plug in alpha, actually one over two alpha, which so it's, it's actually a half of alpha. And, but it, when you solve the equation, you end up at 137 times slower at the horizon of the, of the Bohr atom. And so basically it tells you that alpha is alpha because at the Bohr radius, that is the speed at which the Planck field is rotating to produce the exact mass of an electron. And then if you change that radius as you're going down the table of elements, as you change that radius, the speed, you know, um, uh, changes, right? And as, as, it, as they change, you get two electrons, you get three electrons, you get four electrons, you get, and you get the whole table of elements, all with that same level of precision with zero pre, you know, zero free parameters, with zero, you know, uh, variables that are, you know, not uh, part of the, uh, of the fundamental theory.